This week in the metaverse, Star Atlas shares more information on their vision for the future, Second Life may be getting a second chance, Earth 2 gets a facelift, and more. What is up guys? Welcome back to the Bull Combo. I hope you're all doing great and I hope you're having a fantastic day. It's been another week in the metaverse and that means we have another week's worth of metaverse news to get to. So without any further delay, let's jump right into this week's metaverse update. The Sandbox's Mega City land sale wrapped up Thursday morning. 61 lands and 95 premium lands along with seven estates were up for sale. This is the first sale of 2022 in the Sandbox Metaverse, and let's hope that there's lots more sales this year for people to get an opportunity to get in on land ownership. Speaking of land ownership, the Sandbox has announced an upcoming sand airdrop for all land owners. A snapshot was taken in late December, and today the Sandbox announced that all land owners will receive at minimum 100 sand if they owned land at the time of the snapshot. You can check out the official Sandbox Twitter and Discord for more information on the airdrop, including the eligibility requirements. The Alpha Season 2 Game Jam is also still live. Now is your chance to have your land experience or game featured in the next Sandbox Alpha. And just to wrap Sandbox news up here, the Alpha Survey is also still available, so if you've participated in the first Sandbox Alpha, it might be a good idea to take a few minutes and fill out the survey. As a reward, every survey participant receives one raffle ticket toward a season pass for Alpha Season 2. It's been a couple weeks since we had any news out of the Earth 2 front, however this week Earth 2 got a major facelift. Over the last couple days a new user interface rolled out on the Earth 2 platform. The first major change or update of 2022, this new user interface adds a sleeker and cleaner design to the Earth 2 website. This is the latest in a series of user interface updates that have been made over the last few months. It definitely seems like the development team has taken the user interface feedback specifically very seriously and has been doing their best to implement changes as quickly as possible. I do have to say that this latest round of changes is very robust and it does bring a very clean look to the Earth 2 platform. We're going to keep an eye on the development updates and roadmap milestones for Earth 2. It sounds like 2022 could be quite a year for Earth 2 in terms of new updates, new rollouts, possibly some blockchain integration and other things. So as those updates roll out, we'll make sure to bring you those here. Star Atlas has released additional details about their faction alignment companies. In addition to the original factions announced, Mud, Oni, and Ooster, we now know that there will be multiple sub factions within Star Atlas each with different benefits or perks when it comes to battle, shipbuilding, and resource gathering. If you're looking for additional information, I'd recommend heading to the Star Atlas Discord or their official Twitter, where you can find the Faction Alignment Companies document that goes into further details about this. There's a lot of really in-depth detail on what they're looking to do with the economy of the game, and I think it's rather impressive what they're trying to accomplish here. This comes several weeks after Star Atlas introduced fleet staking, a way for players to stake ships in return for daily Atlas rewards. So far, the staking program has been widely successful, and most users seem to enjoy the mechanic and gamification aspect. Star Atlas has been met with both criticism and high praise, however, it's encouraging to see them announcing the finer details of their metaverse vision. It was another successful week for the VV platform. They started off the week with Amazing Spider-Man number 798 and Alpha Flight number 1 comic drops followed by the announcement of the Fantastic Four Invisible Woman drop occurring on Saturday the 15th. Interestingly enough, with this drop, they originally incorrectly announced it as being in blind box format. However, due to user outcry and feedback after that announcement, Vivi did in fact go ahead and change the drop style to be blind box format. I thought that was a pretty cool move by Vivi in regards to listening to their community and taking that feedback seriously. In addition to that, Vivi also announced the Jermaine Rogers Veil Specimen Drop that's going to be releasing on Sunday, January 16th. Over the last couple weeks, the Vivi collectibles have seen a major increase in value, both on the collectible side and on the comic side. It seems like there's a lot of momentum working and building inside of the Vivi platform right now, possibly aided by the recent Immutable X migration. Nevertheless, Vivi is a platform we're going to have to watch as we head into 2022 because I think we're going to see lots of great things. Philip Rosedale, Second Life's founder, has decided to task a core team with working on Second Life and evolving the platform, now that the metaverse has become a buzzword yet again. Rosedale thinks that VR headsets could hit an iPhone moment, but maybe not for another few years, and in the meantime, he's shifting focus to a metaverse platform that doesn't require headsets. 
Rosedale is going to be a strategic advisor for Second Life, and while his company High Fidelity looks to infuse Second Life with some new ideas, they're simultaneously working on other ideas for future tech, including at some point VR. The reason for this shift is that Second Life still makes money and still has a considerably larger community than many VR platforms. At this time, it had over 73 million accounts created since its launch, and some estimate that an active user base is still hovering around 900,000. Rosedale sees this shift as solving a problem while VR hardware still gets the thought out and still gets to that mainstream level. We'll see how this affects the future success of Second Life and how it fits with the modern mold of a metaverse in general. All right, guys, and before we get to this last update of the day, if you guys like this video, make sure to hit that like button. And if you guys like the content you're seeing here, make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell to get notified when I post new videos. It really helps the YouTube algorithm push these videos out to other people that'll find them useful. So again, if you're finding them useful, if you find value in these videos, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell to get notified. It is greatly appreciated. Turkish cattle farmer is that Kocek has experimented with virtual reality headsets on some of his cows, and the results were both positive and surprising. Developed in cooperation with veterinarians to ensure cow safety, these VR headsets were first tested in Moscow, Russia. The virtual reality headsets create the illusion that the cows are standing outside in a sunny field. The hardware is a standard human VR headset that's been modified to fit a cow's head. In this case, he claims that the cow's milk output has increased from 22 to 27 liters a day, as well as an improvement in the quality of the milk output. This after using the VR devices on two of the cows. In addition to walking his animals around the large pasture, Kachik allows them to listen to relaxing music with these VR glasses. He decided to start with two cows, and at the moment they're in the test phase, but he's ordered 10 more virtual reality glasses for the next phase, and if they're successful, he'll be ordering glasses for the entire herd. I do have to say this is both incredibly interesting, mildly hilarious in terms of this VR use case, but at the same time, it makes a ton of sense. And if these animals are already going to be in a specific area, and if these areas, and if these animals are already going to be in a contained area for their entire lives, why not make it a little bit more enjoyable? It'll be interesting to monitor the longer term effects of this usage and the type of attention it may draw from animal rights groups, but it'll be interesting to follow nonetheless. That was all the updates I had for this week, guys. A lot of really interesting things going on from VR cow headsets to Second Life possibly making a second resurgence. There's a lot of stuff already happening in 2022. Again, make sure to share your comments or opinions on any of the topics I covered today down below. Other than that, I want to thank you all for checking out this video. I want to thank you all for all of the awesome support you always show. I hope you all have a fantastic Friday, an excellent weekend, and until next time, we'll see you soon.